All right, but first, Natalie, let's talk some entertainment venues. And as you know, we both love telling people, okay, all right, this is back open now, and, and here's where you can do this safely. Well, you can imagine that venues across the country are still trying to figure this out. And our next guest, we're so interested. We were talking with him before we got started this morning. We have so many questions. And again, me and you want to see the, the entertainment industry strive and come back to where it was. But again, we need to do that safely. So joining us from Crowbar this morning, and he's also part of a, a special organization that was uh, launched right here at uh, in 2020 in these COVID times, we have Tom DeGeorge uh, joining us again, owner of Crowbar. Good morning, Tom. Good to see you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, you know, as Carly just set the stage there, I mean, everyone, you know, we want to get back to normal. You keep hearing that so often in every aspect of life. But when it comes to the music scene, this is a, a vital clog, if you will, in helping grow the music scene and having artists kind of find themselves throw in the pandemic, but doing it the smart way and reopening. Where do you stand now and what have you learned during this time? Um, well, with the Nevo organization, we have a, a, a captain in every state and we're all working together to try to get. Explain what that is, what NEVA is. NEVA is the National Independent Venue Association. Um, it is made up of independent ticketed venues from all over the country. And we're all working together with the goal to keep our industry um, going. Um, here in Florida, I was shuttered for seven months. In other parts of the country, there's still venues that are still closed um, that, that haven't reopened. And we are still waiting for federal funding. We, we worked to get a act on the floor of Congress. It's uh, within the HEROES Act, and it's a bill called Save Our Stages. And it's a $10 billion package to um, get needed funding to independent ticket venues around the country. You know, we were talking before you got started and you were we were asking, like, how long has, has this been around? And you're like, oh, no, it started as a result of COVID and the pandemic. Explain why you saw this need and how everybody's come together. Well, I believe the original organizers, they had already been discussing it pre-COVID and it just it just happened that it formed around the same time. And then we immediately had something that we had to all work together to fix in the first place. When you think of independent ticketed venues, there's not, there, in the past, there hasn't been much of a synergy there, but being that we're dealing with this national crisis and the tour industry relies on the connectivity of these venues, um, we realized that without the federal funding that we could lose 90% of these venues. And if, you know, even if you lose 30 or 40% of them, I think we've lost about 300 venues around the country so far, um, that's gonna hurt the tour industry significantly because these artists won't have the means to go from place to place. Well, and forgive me for asking this, but make sure to explain what the independent ticketed venues are, like examples of those. Yeah. Crowbar, a great example of that. I mean, we're not talking about, obviously, the huge places where you see concerts, you know, Raymond James here in Tampa or something like that. I mean, explain no. who no. it is when and you, what Crowbar you, is. You know, when you think of an independent ticketed venue, you could be talking about anything from you know, 300 to, to, to 3,000 or 4,000 uh, people, places like the Crowbar locally, at least here, places like the Crowbar, the Attic, uh, the Ritz Theater, um, Strat Center for the Performing Arts even, um, the Orpheum. Um, these are all uh, ticketed venues uh, over in St. Pete, like places like the State Theater. I know okay. it's been renamed now, or Janus Landing. These are all mm -hmm. venues that exist around Tampa Bay that that are vital to the community. That, that I mean, you talk about and they, they provide a place for touring artists that travel around the country to get better. So they do get to the point where they play the Emily arenas or the, the mm -hmm. Raymond James stadiums, but they all start in these smaller rooms. I really appreciated what you said before we got started, too, and you were just talking about capacity, and that's how it kind of defines this organization. But really, the push to capacity, we want people in, but we need to be smart. At least that's what you're seeing, and I know that's what you're passionate about these days, doing it the right way for the community. Can you touch on that in closing? Well, well, like I said, there's still areas where places aren't open at all. So when I chose to open, I chose to open at 25% at um, seated socially distanced and wearing masks because I don't want to do anything that that's going to take longer to get our numbers here in Florida under control and 
and make it longer for the for the tour industry um, to resume. If if you look up north, now that it's getting colder and more people have to go inside, mm -hmm. we're already seeing Chicago just shut their all their stuff back down, and mm -hmm. New York will probably be following. So I'm trying to educate the people here in Florida that even though the governor has said that we're in phase three, our low numbers right now, um, 2,500 cases a day sometimes, are sometimes higher than the peaks that other states have had. So mm -hmm. as you can imagine that, you can imagine the tour industry starting again, you can mm -hmm. imagine that a lot of artists aren't gonna come down here until we can get this thing under control. Real quickly before we close, you you do have events though. We wanna, if you can quickly mention them yeah. before we wrap up yeah. here. I'm gonna, we have, we're starting to do um, uh, some small local showcases. Uh -huh. Like I said, seated 25% capacity. If you go to the crowbarebor.com website, you can see that information there. This weekend on Friday, we have um, Will Quinlan and the Holy Roll Train. And then on Saturday, we have um, a Halloween party with a band um, called Florida Night Heat. Okay. So, um, and, and those tickets are available on the website. And once again, they're safe, socially distanced uh, shows. Quarter of a we, need to, we need to have you back. We, yeah. uh, we just really enjoy talking with you. And uh, thank you for all that you're doing to, to really make sure that uh, people who love live music like myself have a safe place to go. Thank you very much. I always appreciate the opportunity to take care to talk about the Save Our Stages. Thank you.